Okay, we're back here live inside theCUBE, day three. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of OpenStack Summit in Portland, Oregon, 2013. Explosive growth uh, in the OpenStack community, crossing over in the mainstream. It's hit a tipping point. We're here, three days of live coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, and uh, you know, we talk to everyone. We're talking to all the top dogs, the big guys, the developers, the startups, and we have another exciting startup here, Sean Lynch, who's the CEO of MetaCloud from Pasadena. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks. So, uh, you guys are, uh, you know, funded startup early, well, not well, growing early stage, but you know, first round growing type quickly, growing quickly. Yep. Um, Jerry Yang is an investor. Omni Jerry Ventures. Yang That's and right. Omni Ventures and uh, Storm. Uh, Jerry Yang, obviously co-founder uh, co of Yahoo, and your partner was also run ops at Yahoo, and you ran uh, SVP. It was engineering or ops? Yeah, at Ticketmaster? senior vice president of global operations at Ticketmaster. Yeah, so you guys know a little bit about scale. That's right. right? Yeah, we all we both come from very big <laughs> operations <laughs> backgrounds. So. so one of my favorite interviews I've ever done on the Cube was uh, with Amr Awadallah, who's the uh, co-founder of Cloudera, and he was at Yahoo, sold his company there back in the day, and. And when, when he started Cloudera, I asked him, you know, Amr, you know, talk, tell me about the vision of Cloudera. And he had an epic line. At Yahoo, we saw the future. Yeah. We were in the future, and then he went to start a company to bring that uh, future to the rest of the world. And a lot of the web companies and, and the folks that you did, like the Ticketmaster, you guys were doing a lot of stuff at web scale. The web scale market was pioneering DevOps. That's right. So yeah. talk about yeah, that. we had a uh, we had a mass, you know, big multi-tenant private cloud in 2008. Actually, based on you know, we didn't have the luxury of OpenStack at the time, but so we had to build our <laughs> own orchestration <laughs> layer running on open source Citrix Zen server, and it was you know cobbled together, but it was servicing the third largest e-commerce site in the world. Um, so we come from very large, big scale operations, and uh, the team, the core engineering team, also comes from Ticketmaster. It's the cloud engineering and operations group from Ticketmaster. So they came along with me when we founded the company, and we're bringing that operations expertise to bear with our clients. I often talk with my friend Insuk Ray, who's at Rembrandt Ventures, he was at Loud Cloud, and talking about you know, the cloud back in the day, you didn't build your own everything. That's right. You know, so so, so explain, explain to the folks out there, why OpenStack is so popular. Sure. And, I, and can yeah. compare and contrast to the things that you had to do sure. back in the days when you had to roll your sleeves up and do everything. Yeah, so I'll, maybe I'll talk about why we started with OpenStack. And OpenStack is kind of a starting point for our platform. OpenStack is highly modular. And we really needed something that was modular so that we could build on top of that you know, the enterprise functionality that we felt like we needed to take the product to market. So um, we've added HA, dynamic failover, we've added automated scale up and scale out, we've added real time you know, performance and capacity planning, graphite integration, trending, Ceph, block store support. So we really needed something that was highly modular so we can add to it and deliver something into our client base. And I think one thing you'll see with MetaCloud, our business model's distinctly different than I think most, th than anyone else actually, you'll see here at the summit. Uh, we have a very, different business model than private cloud space. We operate clouds, uh, our enterprise clouds on our client's behalf. So, so obviously OpenStack, vendor neutral, a lot of choice, layered components. That's right. Completely modular. So, okay, cool, good to check the box on the OpenStack uh, uh, popularity. Talk about your startup right now. Okay, obviously sure. you guys, you know, have experience, you have you know, made your bones in, in building your own, you have a lot of experience writing code, infrastructure as code, DevOps. Yep. Um, what are you guys doing right now in your startup and what is your core uh, sure. vision and value sure. proposition? So we started the company in 2011. We have two years of R&D on top of OpenStack. Um, we've, we've done a lot to it. Um, <laughs> and really our focus thus far has been on product technology, product development, and very little on sales and marketing. We're kind of that, that OpenStack based company that not many people have heard of, but we've had a lot of commercial traction and commercial success in the space. Uh, we have big enterprise customers that, um, trust me, you've heard of, Fortune, I'll call it Fortune 30 companies, and, and we're operating their clouds, and we have been for some time. So you operate, so the, the, the architecture of your business model is, is what? Explain to the folks out there sure. how you're uh, engaging so with, with clients and what the, what the yeah. business model is. So simply put, maybe I'll talk about why we started the company. Uh, we started the company because public cloud is great in that it's fully managed. It's not great because it's public. 
So what we wanted to do is take that public cloud experience and move it into the enterprise. You just consume OpenStack, you just spin up compute, you can drive up the efficiency of your existing capital investment. We take your existing servers, we take your existing data centers, we take your existing server infrastructure, and we overlay our platform on top of it, and we remotely manage it for you. You just consume it like you would the public cloud. But the problem with public cloud today is, is problems for the enterprise become acute at scale cost, data locality, predictable performance. You don't really have that in the public cloud space. But it's fully managed, you just consume it. It's highly agile. No one can take that away from EC2. So you're so co-locating public cloud inside the enterprise. That's exactly right. And, and can I borrow that tagline? Because it's yeah. a great tagline. Cool. All yeah, right. But it's not really, <laughs> but it's uh, not and when you get <laughs> super big, you got to contribute All to right, the cube. All right, I will, because that's, right. that's, that's a great tagline. <laughs> open source. That's right. You know, we are <laughs> always adding value here inside the cube, that's and, right. and <laughs> love to help startups that <laughs> are doing kick-ass things. So uh, let's expand. This is really a great topic, because this is one of the reasons why Mirantis uh, is getting a lot of success. We had the CEO on yesterday, Adrian, yeah. and People want OpenStack now, and they the do. IT doesn't have the, the resources, they've cut down to the bone, they've sure. outsourced everything, and yeah. now they got to invest a lot of money to spin up new stuff. Right, and, and many in the OpenStack space are kind of in the consulting arena, or, or they're handing software over, but uh, there's a real problem, what we classify as day two support, right? What do you do after you've architected and engineered an OpenStack-based cloud for someone? You hand it off and they run into real world problems in production. They have to pick up the phone, they have to articulate the problem, well, they're down, potentially, and, y and you have to articulate back a solution. Well, during that time, you know, you're taking a hit in production, and that's just not feasible. So in our environment, we're streaming back performance and capacity planning metrics all the time. We can proactively take advantage, take advantage of that data. If we see, see you know, ECC memory errors or smart disk detection errors, we'll actually live migrate VMs off suspect bare metal, quiescent, set it aside, and say, hey, you know, this needs to be replaced or looked at. So it's a very yeah. white glove. White glove yeah, yeah, and it's, what you're doing is you're basically operationalizing not five nines components, you're basically aggregating the performance across multiple workloads. Exactly, and multiple clouds. I mean, we have this nice networking effect. We can see, you know, Tableau Software is one of our referenceable clients. You know, we can see, hey, how's Tableau Software doing versus another, you know, um, another big client, and we can kind of correlatively say, hey, you know, on this hardware configuration with this workload, maybe we want to make these tweaks or recommend these tweaks to so our clients. So do the clients get data protection? I mean, there's obviously sensitivity. One of the big issues is, you know, I've heard one guy tell me, probably won't say the name of the company, CIO, big, huge, billion dollar budget, say I yeah. will never, ever put any of my data in the cloud, ever. Right. Just sure. period, ever. Yeah, and so we hear that a lot. So yeah. you guys are streaming stuff back uh, to you, your platform. Is it data or is it just element? It's performance uh, metrics, it's tenant level workload metrics, it's performance oriented. It allows us to do trend based performance but analysis. But not data. Not data, no, not at all. In fact, uh, we're pretty adamant about having a hard line of demarcation between us and our clients. And that line of demarcation is, is, is very clear cut. We don't yeah. get into the guest VM. You know, we, we're just running the, the cloud um, virtualization and orchestration self-service layers. So Sean, I'm curious when you go in and, and you make a proposal that you're going to move some, some portion of their existing services and reconfigure it into a private cloud. Right. I presume that's how it works, or sure. do they usually uh, allocate a new budget and buy a bunch of new stuff and set that up as a cloud? Uh, I mean, honestly, what they really say, if I can be candid, is I have all this VMware stuff, um, can you convert it over for me? Okay. So, so really, uh, you know, we see VMware is highly vulnerable right now, yeah. and uh, we do bake-offs against them all the time, and we steal business away from them all day long. And, so and really, it's, hey, we have this ESX or vCloud environment, can you get in there, migrate those hypervisors, that bare metal over to MetaCloud, handle the migration of my guest VMs, handle the migration of the infrastructure, and iteratively get me off of VMware and get, my, get me into an open platform. Well, yes. this is exactly what's happening in, in other uh, scale out open source environments with Oracle's getting their you know, uh, butt handed to them because, hey, I want to convert, or whoever can convert licensed software yeah. right. <laughs> into right. a scalable architecture right. will win. Yeah, and we'll and do the whole thing. We, we'll basically take it, you know, a couple cabinets of VMware, convert it over to OpenStack, hand them the keys to their new cloud within a couple days. Yeah, so exchange your car. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. Turn your car. We're, we're, back right. the, we're back to the car. I like car it. analogies right. again. I'm, I'm curious if if uh, if you guys are able to do it at uh, an efficiency level that's better. Where because my question was okay, so you you set up their private cloud. Yeah. Things are great. Oh my gosh, we need more resources. Sure. And you're not really in their procurement cycle, and I and I presume the service that you sold them doesn't include. We're going to help you with procurement and, and uh, more gear. But uh, conversely, if you're running it more efficiently and things are really clicking, you need less. You need less. Yeah, 
that's kind right. of how does that that's really right. work no, out? That's in, a good point. In I real mean, world. look, the the server market's a fifty five billion dollar market, and realistically, server infrastructure is about fifteen percent utilized across the enterprise. Even with virtualization, I mean, if you look in a VMware environment where you're virtualizing on a per server basis, on a per hypervisor basis, yeah, you're driving up utilization of that single server. But VMware doesn't really have a robust answer to multi-tenancy. We do. We do via OpenStack, and you know, OpenStack is highly multi-tenant, which allows us to look at covariant workloads. Hey, dev's busy when QA isn't. Mm. QA is busy when load testing isn't. Load right. testing's busy when production isn't. Let's take all of those covariant workloads, due to multi-tenancy, stripe them across the same bare metal, let's drive that utilization up to 85, 90%. You get a tremendous amount, you know, additional use out of the same capital right. investment. So you don't need to buy more boxes. That's right, so talk about your investment. That's right. Talk about your, investment. About your investment now. Obviously you have customers, so you have, uh, you're generating revenue. Yeah, we're you're generating recurring uh, you're revenue. Not, you didn't do a monster venture round. We didn't need um, to. You, yeah. didn't need, you didn't need to, so no, you're producing good. good cash flow. We're making, yeah, we're doing great. great. Yep. Okay, Absolutely. good. So, um, hot startup here. Uh, FYI, if you're in Pasadena, uh, they're Stop hiring. By. I guarantee you they're hiring if they we got are. these kind of clients. Uh, any plug for the uh, recruiting opportunities? Yeah, uh, definitely. Jobs at metacloud.com, hit us up. Um, you know, we're right next to Caltech. If you're at Caltech, stop by, say hi. Yeah, so let's talk about the scale uh, scale that you've had experience in. So let's want to kind of reflect back on your earlier days. Sure. You had to, you know, really, I mean, reminds me when I was in college, we used to write, write stuff in Assembler, God, back in the glory days. But, uh, <laughs> you know, now, you know, you look back now at the frameworks out there, but the young guys out there, the young guns and the young DevOps guys out there, what, what's, Given the, given the, what it you used know, to be like I, in the old days I, I, when you walk in the snow with no shoes on. Sure, you know, I, sure. You know, and I, you know, I would, more. What should they be? What should yeah. they be doing now? What should yeah. they be getting excited about when yeah. they get to come so out to I, the work? I world? would love to sit back and say, hey, you know, you guys have it easy. It was much harder when we, you know, we had to make uh, <laughs> SGI Origin 2000s act as Oracle <laughs> servers and stuff. But um, you know, yeah, and, and it was hard, and we had to build our own caching and application servers. We didn't have off-the-shelf components. But you know, there's there's new challenges. With new opportunities becomes new challenges. So, you know, now you have so many different components. Cloud-enabled services, you know, you have, you know, which PaaS stack do you use? Which, you know, when do you go up the stack? And if so, how much? So there's the complexity of having options. And, uh, and I yeah, think yeah. that, It's a whole other level of programming opportunities and challenges. That's right, that's right. And, and, and so I think that diversity, you know, makes it difficult. What's your take on the infrastructure as code? We, obviously, DevOps has become mainstream. We had a site we launched two years ago called devopsangle.com where yeah. we were the only ones talking about DevOps at the time and obviously sure. we were pro DevOps, but obviously that's hit the mainstream. But this notion of infrastructure as code, you talked about orchestration. These are key new opportunities, sure. managing physical infrastructure dynamically. What are your, what's your view on that? Uh, yeah, and my view is, look, I, I mean, um, prior to Chef and Puppet and solutions like it, um, in 2004, when I was heading up, you know, systems engineering, infrastructure engineering at Ticketmaster, we embarked on an R&D initiative called Spine, which is, uh, it's a mouthful, but it's a configuration management and anomaly detection system, highly, high po highly polymorphic, uh, it adapts <laughs> to the environment it's in. But it, it, it's called Spine, it's actually, we GPL'd it when I was there. It's available via code.ticketmaster.com. And it's basically operations as code. So we saw a need for that in, in 04. Um, we, you know, we GPL'd it in, in 04. Um, and you know, truth be told, it's the system by which we deploy clouds at MetaCloud today. So um, you know, we're, we're big fans of it. Uh, taking you know, operational resources and encapsulating that as code makes a ton of sense and, and always has. Great, so uh, final question, what's your goals for the year? Obviously, you guys are a startup and you got to pick a position, enter the market in on a beachhead, sure. don't be too overly aggressive, yeah. and then expand and sequence sure. to a larger position. What's your strategy? Uh, you know, we've nailed our product. I, I think the, the product is absolutely solid. I mean, we've added a tremendous amount of R&D around HA with OpenStack. Uh, we've had the luxury of, of having that battle tested in production. You know, we've, we've encountered, um, pretty much every type of you know, workload variant you can imagine at scale. So really, I feel like our product is rock solid. I feel like the, the one thing we haven't done is, is market it well. You know, I, I think we haven't invested very much in sales and marketing, and we need to. So I think we need to take what we have today and, and go wide and go fast. And paddle, 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 get it out there. Okay, uh, successful uh, DevOps strategy. We're here at the OpenStack Summit. Uh, I'm John Furrier with uh, Jeff Frick. We'll be right back with our next guest at the short break. Check out MetaCloud, uh, great hot startup. Love their business model. Let's see uh, how many clients you can get and we'll be hearing from you. And remember, if you use that phrase, you know. <laughs> we'll do. Just attribution, we'll it's open source yeah. at this point. So, you know, you. license with attribution. So, uh, we'll be right back with our next guest right. here, the exclusive coverage of OpenStack, the SiliconANGLE.com's coverage. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys.